Our first guest tonight is the longest serving late night host in American television history and the original host of this program, which premiered 40 years ago tonight. Please welcome back to his show, the one, the only, David Letterman. <laughs> Very nice. Thank, thank you, you so much, much for being here, David. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you for being so kind to me. I loved Amber and Jenny. I loved the band. And uh, you're, you're so lucky because everybody is excited to see you. And you come out and you tell your jokes and they laugh at your jokes and stuff. And if I had that Amber and Jenny thing, I'd just, uh, still be on the air. <laughs> <laughs> So, somewhere. <laughs> well, somewhere. What a great idea that is. Yeah, it was yeah. their idea. And they the, came and up the, with it. And the, and the music, lovely. Yeah, they're lovely. really good. We got a great band. Uh, now, I, I do want to make sure uh, we talk about the past a little bit, uh, your past. But the last time you were here, I want to just uh, refer to this. You brought a tick. Oh, yes. Yeah. And uh, that was the... a tick. And you asked us to test it for Lyme. Yes. And? Uh, it, it turned out it just had too much to drink. <laughs> Nothing worse than a drunken tick, is there? Walked out of here a couple days later, slept it off, and walked right out of here. Well, so it's a win-win, I guess. Sure. So have you stayed? Have you stayed healthy through these last couple of years? How, what have you heard? Um. <laughs> Uh, yes, I have stayed healthy, and uh, honest to goodness, if it weren't for your kind invitation, I would not have known that this is the 40th anniversary of the beginning of what you now do as the show. I would not no have known. No idea. Uh, so thank, thank you again for that. What were your memories leading up to that night, the premiere? You had Bill Murray as your first guest. Oh, my God, yes. Well, uh, two things. First of all, what was I consumed by? Paralytic fear. Mm -hmm. Uh, because we had blown up the NBC daytime schedule a year right. previously. I, uh, we had a show, a lot of us had a show, that we thought was just great, and it was on for 90 minutes live, like 9 to 10.30 on, on NBC, and it replaced two or three uh, game shows, and it, it turned out uh, America didn't want them replaced. <laughs> Certainly didn't want them replaced by me. But when, when you're young, uh, one of the nice uh, complimentary features of being young is being dumb. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all thought, oh, television is the way television is because we're not there yet. When we get to television, it'll be fine. <laughs> we were wrong about that and many, many other things. So um, we were on the air for... I don't know, maybe six weeks. That's it for the morning show. That's it. I have six weeks, um, maybe maybe two months. I don't know. And then I had to go to the end of the line. And how long did you wait at the end of the line before late night happened? Not too long. Well, speak for yourself. <laughs> uh, it it seemed like uh, an eternity because in show business, uh, if if you screw something up like blowing up a network's daytime schedule. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> uh, you, you know, it could be a while before they call your number again. Yeah. And, uh, but eventually we came back and I was still living with this trepidation that, well, this can't possibly go any better than the other one went. But, so you have that aside, and on the other hand, you have Bill Murray and you think, oh my God, who can't love Bill Murray? So I had mixed emotions and then the, the night of the show, I just felt fantastic. And then that lasted, I, I guess, till I, my uh, feet hit the floor in the morning. <laughs> and then the, the paralytic fear starts all over again. Yeah, in those early days, it doesn't, a good show doesn't last particularly long as far as putting your fear to bed. Well, that's right, but I don't know that we were doing a good show, Bill Murray accepted. But we tried to be as unusual as possible because nobody, there was nothing else on TV in those days. It went away right after uh, Johnny Carson. So then we had this show, and we tried to make it as unusual as we possibly could because we knew 
how many people are actually watching? And they, and they said, all right, we'll give you six weeks. So they gave us six weeks. And at the end of six weeks, they said, OK, you can come back and do six more weeks. So through, through the first year, we were never certain beyond a month and a half or two months if we had a future. And, and then uh, things uh, started to, yeah, you know, the cement started to harden a little bit. Did you have a moment then where you started feeling relaxed with the show and that you'd be around for a long time? I'm trying to think if I had one waiting to come out here. <laughs> I don't know. No, the show business is awful and ugly. How about yeah. you? Now, you, Mr. Established, ready to go, here I am. Thank you very much. You're in good shape. Well, I think I obviously had a different journey. I was terrified when it started, but I had just finished up a very long run at SNL. So I did feel I was comfortable in the building. I, mm -hmm. you know, I, and, people, I, and people liked you? People knew you? They certainly knew right. me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there was name recognition. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it took me a while. I would say it took me about 18 months. I will say this. I had an interesting journey, like everybody doing shows over the last two years, of going and doing the show at home. I think you would have... Oh. Oh. Terrible reason. I think you would have enjoyed doing shows at home. Yes, I, I, you're absolutely right. Um, now, the one thing that I still would insist on at home would be makeup. Uh huh. I, I'm not going to put on a show without makeup. Yeah. But uh, the constraints of that, you don't look at them as constraints so much as opportunities. Here I am at the house. What can I do? And you know, I would go wake my family up one <laughs> night. See, see how that's going. <laughs> Uh, and, and how long were you at home? I was at home uh, for almost, I guess, nine, ten months. And uh, it was exhilarating, I mean, terrifying, but it was so interesting because you have this audience here, and I love having an audience here. Now, but while you while you were at home, was the audience still here? Uh, <laughs> I, I did insist on it. And looking back, it was a public health risk, and I apologize for it, but... <laughs> So the audience isolated for 10 months here. In it the was studio. the same audience. We didn't bring in a different oh, group oh, every night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Food and blankets, you're fine. But it was, I felt more connection with the audience at home than I ever had before yeah. because there was nobody else out there. Right. And, and did, was there an intimacy that developed that heretofore had not existed? It was the first time that I understood a thing that I should have understood from watching your show, which is the people that watch your show tend to watch it every night. Mm. And so you can sort of lay in recurring bits. You can make a callback joke to something. On Thursday, you can call back Monday with the sense that they probably were there with you. And that became a nice, intimate connection mm -hmm. that time. Yeah. You mentioned you'd wake up your family. One of the things one of the, that I first remember about your show, your mom became a, a player on your show. How did you first think that she would be a fun character to bring on television? Well, first of all, this is exciting because in her life, in my life, no one has ever described my mom as a player. So <laughs> thank you for that. That's great. <laughs> um, I was driving to work one day in the old days, and Howard Stern was talking to his mother. Mm -hmm. And um, I kind of put the pieces together and thought, I have a mother. <laughs> and, and it was because of Howard, then we started putting my mother uh, on the show. And people, she became so popular because she, in many ways for television, the perfect mother, snow white, beautiful hair, lovely woman. And, um, but the thing about my mom, and everybody would, would say, oh, we love your mother, we love your mother. And, and I would say, yeah, try living with her for 18 years. <laughs> but um, she was uh, the, the textbook definition of taciturn. Mm -hmm. Just, mom, a lot of that. Um, <laughs> so we, we decided to send her to Norway for the Olympics, I think, after... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not to compete. <laughs> No, no, she was competing. She Believe did compete. Yeah, no. she, did, she did poorly, if I recall. She, she did not medal. <laughs> we don't say she did poorly. Oh, we say she did she not did medal. Not medal. No. <laughs> uh, so what I what I found with mom was she would. It was like I was doing a ventriloquist act, because <laughs> it, it, in the question I would have to supply her with the answer, and we'd get a lot of David. <laughs> And people thrived on this and, and loved it. And, and I thought it was a great way. 
ah, to bring us close together. Yeah. I, I don't know what your life was with your family, but uh, I felt <laughs> I felt an estrangement. <laughs> And, and I thought this would, and it, and it did. We, we, in fact, became closer. But the idea that, that she was just a, a ball of laughs and great fun, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see the paperwork on that. <laughs> but she, um, <laughs> uh, she, uh, and God bless her, she lived to be almost 94. Wow. Yeah, it was amazing. And, And as people say, sometimes good for her, she uh, died, uh, died doing what she loved, uh, sleeping. So, um, <laughs> I, <laughs> we, I, I cleared that with the family. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's very wise of you. That's very wise. Thank you, you very you, much. You know the business. Now, <laughs> Uh, we're going to go to commercial. This is very exciting. We have a clip. Oh, yeah. Now, l let me intervene, and I'm sorry. Uh, this clip, and, and people come on shows and, with uh, clips and stuff, and there's never been a clip produced and shown on a talk show that has impelled anyone to go see the movie. They just, yeah. it's like 60 minutes for, you know, whatever. Seth and I can chat about you. Uh, and, and this clip is only representational. Mm -hmm. It's not humorous. It's not funny. It's representational of the nonsense that we uh, pursued each and every night when uh, I first started the show, which, by the way, uh, is so much better now, thanks to you. <laughs> well, I don't know if I agree with that. And you can make your own judgment after you watch this representational clip. When you work here at NBC, one of the things you do a lot is ride in elevators. And since a lot of sports originated from real-life activities, there is no better sport for this building than, of course, elevator races. You are not allowed to ask anyone to hold the elevator for you. You must ride only on your assigned elevator, and you must be polite to all other passengers. David, the atmosphere down here is incredibly tense. Uh, I'd have to liken it to the scene at the 18th green of a Masters golf tournament. Suddenly, history. Excuse me, just a minute. Speaking of uh, history, uh, Livingston. Fantastic. Apparently, we have a winner. Is this? Uh... Uh...